Hi, Stephen from Own or Disown. In this video, I'm going to be doing a three-way smackdown between three eight-core CPUs. Now, of course, I've tested the 4800H in the uh, ASUS TUF A15, so I'll be using that against, of course, the uh, tried and tested the uh, i9-9880H in my uh, Omen 15T. Uh, and also, I've got the 10th gen Intel i7-10875. Uh, it's in here in the uh, electronics. Mech 15 G3. Now, the electronics have tuned this to perfection. They've got a, a long term power max of 120 watts. It's undervolted by 50 millivolts. So, it's going to be a best case uh, scenario for this. Expect most manufacturers won't be pushing as many watts to that and might not necessarily have the necessary thermal headroom. So, stay tuned, of course, for the review on this. And of course, my i9 has been undervolted as well. So, that's the best case situation on that. So, let's have a look at the results. First up is 7-Zip. Now this is a free benchmark that tests compressions and decompressions and gives you a score in millions of instructions per second. It is a good measure on how well the CPU handles zip files. And the higher the score, the better. Ryzen chips do seem to do very good at this and the 4800H had smoked the outgoing i9-9880H but the Intel i7-10875H put in a very good showing, just getting beaten by 3%. Now for video editing, I used Adobe Premiere Pro to do a software encode of a 1080p M2 TS video file to MP4 and measured the time taken. So, lower the better. Again, the 4800H does well here, especially when it just needs about 45 watts to maintain a high boost clock. The i7-10875H just pips it by 4%, but it's pure power that allows this. Now remember, this CPU is using about 100 watts to achieve this. The Blender benchmark has five images to render, so you can choose to use the CPU or the GPU, and I use the former, of course. I add up the time in seconds, so lower the better. Most people will just test the BMW render, but I chose to test all five tests, which really stresses the CPU. As you can see, the Mech 15 G3 gets pretty warm, but it does hold just shy of 4 GHz. And the pattern continues here with the 4800H splitting both Intel CPUs. Most manufacturers won't push as much power to the 10875 as electronics does here, so for most systems, the 4800H is probably the way to go. Now we are all familiar with the Cinebench R20 test. It's quick and easy, and it's a good way of measuring CPU performance. And this is the multi-core test. And higher the score, the better. The 4800H and the 10875H are very similar here. A great testament to Ryzen, considering it uses close to 70 watts less. Corona 1.3 measures the time to render an image, so faster the better. And interestingly, the Ryzen CPU doesn't do as well here, even getting beat by the 9888, so it's no surprise to see the i7-10875 top of the pack. Passmark CPU mark is a good gauge of the general performance of a CPU, as it does do several different tests. The higher the score, the better. The Ryzen 4800H is much better than the Intel chips here, no matter how much power is thrown at them. I suspect the i9-10980HK would fare a bit better if it was fed sufficient power and didn't thermal or power throttle down. Now, Handbrake is a favourite of mine as it is widely used to convert one video file to another. I measured the time taken, shown in minutes, so lower the better. The 10875H was only 27 seconds behind my i9-9900K here actually, which is an amazing performance. It was actually holding 4,189 MHz, which is a great testament to the work electronics have done on the Mech G3. I'm impressed with the 4800H as well, and I can't wait to see what the Ryzen 9 4900H can do. I ran 3D marks times by and showed the CPU score it generates. The higher the score, the better. I think clock speed is king here, and the Intel chips do hold the advantage. Now, this doesn't mean that they are necessarily better for gaming, as the GPU is still the most important factor. Finally, I ran the V-Ray benchmark using the CPU to render an image. I wasn't able to test the 4800H, but I did do the 4900HS in the ASUS G14, which performs very similar. Now, the higher the score, the better. And like in TimeSpy, this test seems to favour Intel, and again, the 10875H does much better than the 9880H, beating it by 10%. So here's the summary with the 10875 versus the 4800H on the left, and the 10875 versus the 9880H on the right. So on average, the 10875 does beat out its predecessor by a good 13%, which is a nice improvement, and for, for my main workload, which is video editing, that can save up quite a bit of time. 
The 4800H was very close though, only 2% away. I didn't include the 4900HS V-Ray result here, which would have brought it down slightly, but you know, there's no question about the great job AMD has done here, considering it uses so much less power to achieve a similar result. I must also give credit to Electronics for showing us what really the i7 10875H is really capable of. Definitely expect a slower chip in other systems with less thermal headroom to handle the power that is needed to keep this thing boosted to the max. I'm really looking forward to what the Ryzen 9 4900H can do because I, I suspect it will be top of the pack. Now, if you like my video, subscribe, particularly as I'll have that uh, Electronics uh, Mech 15 G3, uh, the review coming up very shortly. Bye now.